Possum's Hardcore Castle time. We're not going back to the village today, but I just wanted to say, I've decided 11 of the 13 households down there will have tenants in them and land assigned. The other two will work for one each of the 11. I have to put a third of the land belonging to the castle under the plough. That means with crops on it. That means 586 chunks. This field and the little bit behind that tree that I started is seven. I've got a long way to go. We are not doing that today. But I went down in my mind, I found two pockets of deep slate, which was enough for the roof of the church, the walled garden of the guild hall, and if we come down here, all this. <laughs> so there was a job I said I would do when I got deep slate. There was also a job I said I'd do when I got silk touch. I've got both. They're the jobs we're doing today. I'm going to start with the deep slate job first. So first thing I need to do is turn these into brick. Okay, I'll make up a whole lot of brick and then we will get started with the task at hand. All right, we'll see how that goes, if that's enough. Now, when you are making a castle, you want your strongest stone at the bottom. And your strongest stone in general had a high iron content. Now, depending on where you're digging your stone from, you could work out what type of stone had the highest iron content by looking at its colour. The darker the stone, the higher the iron. So I'm saying that the deep slate stone indicates a high iron content. So my entire bottom row right the way around towers and walls is going to be deep slate. Where have I put my bed? So I'm going to make it the stones that are below the first leveling course. They'll all be deep slate. And of course this is a Minecraft order not a reality order. You would not take out your stones at the bottom and replace them. You'd build them with the correct stones in the first place doesn't look too bad. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, I'm going to go around and replace all this stone brick here, which is great because it'll give me more for the top. While I'm rebuilding the walls, let's talk a little about a lord's lands. It was called a domain. I'll put the word up on the screen. That's how it's spelled. It said domain. You can guess it's a Norman word. The domain was all the lands and holdings of the lord. It was made up of a number of manors, which included villages, farmsteads and hamlets, and also the Lord's Wastes, which was the land that wasn't any good for cultivation, but you could graze animals on it or use it for hunting or whatever. There were a number of people who managed the land for the Lord. Some of the names will be familiar. The main manager of the domain was the steward. He had the oversight of the entire thing. He traveled between the manors, deciding what crops should be sown in which area, based partly on need and also partly on returns and market value, whether animals should be moved from one area to another and all sorts of other things. And he also handled legal matters. The steward for a very high noble or for the king was called a seneschal. Below the steward were the reeves or bailiffs. They oversaw individual manners and acted as the Lord's representative in local legal proceedings. Uh, stewards and seneschals were appointed. Reeves were often elected by the tenants of the manor. That is, the ordinary people. Elections were held yearly, but a good reeve could hold the position for a very long time. Interestingly, steward and reeve were the Anglo-Saxon words, while bailiff and seneschal were Norman words. Seneschal makes sense as they would have been dealing almost exclusively with Normans and with the English only in an official and limited capacity. To demonstrate how stewards and reeves might work together, let's look at the wood that has grown up on the north side of the castle while we've been busy in the village. Actually, it's there because I pruned the chunks to update to 117, but you know. The steward comes along, says that wood has to go, it's cover for enemies. And we can use the resources at Manor X where we're building a bridge. He makes a note of it, does whatever else he needs to and says he'll be back. The Reeve goes down to our village, says, you, you and you, we have a job to do. And he makes sure that the wood is cleared and the lumber stored. He then sends a message to the steward 
and they make arrangements for it to be transported to Manor X, where the Reeve there will make sure the bridge is built. Stewards and Reeves needed to be literate and numerate and honest. They were responsible for ensuring that the domain was well managed and there was a lot of paperwork associated with their jobs. Which brings us to Robert Carpenter of Harrislade. Robert had been a Reeve and in about 1261 decided to compile the forms and letters that a good Reeve would need. Quite a dry tome but a useful one. Apart from the middle section which while still useful was far from dry. In this middle section, Robert details six forms of embezzlement from an estate. Little tricks and tips that could be used to enrich yourself at your Lord's expense. And he was pretty fair about it. While some of the embezzlements were to benefit a reeve, he included others for shepherds and one for cheesemakers. I love the cheesemaking scam. You divide the day's milk into eight and set aside one portion. And then you make a cheese from the rest, so it's a cheese that is seven eighths the size it should be. The next day, you divide the day's milk into eight, set aside two portions, and pour in yesterday's one portion. You then make a cheese that is seven eighths the size it should be. On the third day, you divide the milk into eight, set aside three portions, and pour back into the rest yesterday's two portions, and again make a cheese seven eighths the size it should be. By the seventh day, you have two lots of seven eighths and you make two cheeses. One goes where it's supposed to, the other, the secret cheese, made with fresh milk because you're clever. You get to keep or sell. And then you start the whole thing again with the new week until the cheese making is done. Talk about blessed are the cheese makers. But enough about cheese making. <laughs> This is the second job I was going to do when I had Silk Touch, remember, so that I could get stone. Making this castle look like it's sitting on a great big stone outcropping. And that's as far as I got because I've run out of deep slate and I've run out of tough and i got to go back in and get some more. I'm not 100% happy with this. It's going to take a lot more work. Where does this need to be done? Is that right? And having run over the, here, I now have to run back there. And I do need to put in slabs and stairs and mix it up a bit and put in some buttons as pebbles and all the rest of it. But I realised that the rocks down here weren't right and I shifted them up there and hopefully that's okay. But that's as far as I can go. Not even halfway round. I'm going to have to do a lot of mining. <laughs> But yeah, I put off this terraforming. <laughs> I put it off and put it off and here I am the night before <laughs> desperately doing my outro because I only did this this afternoon. Because I was frightened of it. It's such a big task. I think it's on the right track. I don't think it's there yet. We've got stone and gravel. I want to put andesite in there but I'm keeping my andesite for the levelling courses so that bit won't be finished till much later. I do quite like the tough and the deep slate. Uh, I've got some coarse dirt mixed in there and I'm tossing up whether I put leaves in for shrubbery or not or whether we just keep it really clear so that there's no cover for enemies. And once I've finished this or once I've got it to the point where you know, I'm more or less happy then I will put the second curtain wall in. But that's the start made so that's that's two big tasks which haven't made a very long video at all. Sorry about that. I'm back off down the mine. So while I'm down the mine there's end cards on the screen to some more of my videos and if you've made it this far put the secret code phrase in the comments. Blessed are the cheesemakers and I'll see you next time. Bye!